Hello, this video is all about your ideal logic combination boiler. Now, whether you've got the C24, the C30, or the 35, or one of the new logic combination boilers, the operation is still the same. So I'm gonna show you everything that you should need to know about your ideal logic combination boiler. I'm gonna show you how to set your central heating and the most efficient settings for that. I'm gonna show you how to adjust your hot water temperature. And again, the most efficient settings for that. I'm gonna show you how to reset your boiler in case you get a fault code. And then of course, if your pressure drops down too low and you get the F1 code, I'm gonna show you how you can top your boiler up. And of course, don't forget that very important preheat setting, which a lot of people don't know about and they don't really know what it does. So I'm gonna to explain to you exactly what that does and how to turn it on and off. Turning that preheat setting off can definitely save you some gas and reduce your gas bill. Just before I get started, I wanna quickly let you know, I've also made a video on 10 ways that you can reduce your gas bill and you'll find that video in the cards above now or down in the description. And of course, I make lots of other videos all about how to help you with the essential heating and your plumbing. And again, you'll find lots of those links down in the description. Right, now let's get on with showing you how to operate your boiler and make it as efficient as possible. So here's our ideal logic combination boiler. Now this is a C24, but you may have the C30 or the C35, but the operation is still the same. So starting from the left-hand side, we have a pressure gauge just here, indicating how much pressure is on our central heating system. Here we have our hot water control. So this will control how hot our water gets. And then over here, we have our central heating control, and that will control how hot our radiators get. And then over here on the far right, we have the control to select we want central heating or hot water, or just hot water on its own, or there's also the boiler off position. And finally, in the middle of the display here, we have our preheat button, which is also indicated in our display, telling us whether it's on or off, and also the reset button. Right, now let's cover those again in a bit more detail. So here we have our hot water control, and this controls how hot our hot water gets. Now, when we turn the dial, you will see the display changes, and that shows the temperature that we are setting our hot water to. So if I turn the temperature up, the temperature will rise. And if I turn it back down again, the temperature would go down. And you can see that we're operating our hot water because the hot water symbol is flashing in the display. So we could turn the dial right up to maximum and that is the hottest that we can make the hot water. And in the display now, you'll see it says 65 degrees, which is really, really hot water. And we probably never really need it that hot. So let's turn it back down to a more sensible temperature, maybe 55 degrees or possibly 50. But if you can get away with setting it a bit lower, then that's gonna make your boiler more efficient. Because there's absolutely no point in heating your hot water up to a really high temperature to then find it's really a bit too hot at the tap. You have gotta cool it down with some cold water. Because if you're doing that, you're just wasting gas and increasing your gas bill. Now going back to the display, you can see I've set right down a minimum, which is at 40 degrees. So that's the lowest temperature we can set the hot water to. Now you could try setting your water at 40 degrees, but you'll probably find it's just not quite hot enough. So I always recommend somewhere between 48 and 50 degrees seems to be a pretty good average temperature. Now there are times you may find you need to set it just a little higher. Like if you have a mixer shower, which uses your hot and your cold water, when you turn the temperature up on your shower, you may find you can't get your shower quite hot enough. And so by setting it to 55 degrees, hopefully you would then find your shower is then hot enough. If it's not, you could then just turn the temperature up a little bit more on your boiler. Or you may actually find you could turn your temperature down a bit. And of course, the lower we can set our hot water temperature, the more efficiently our boiler is gonna run, saving us gas. And additional wear on our boiler. Now there is another occasion where you might want to turn your hot water up to a really high temperature, and that's if you like having really hot baths. And when you're in the bath, you might wanna to just top it up with some more hot water. Now what some of my customers do is they turn the temperature up really high on the boiler when they want to have a bath. And when they've finished having a bath, they turn that temperature back down to 50 degrees. So the water then coming out of your tap is a far more useful temperature and you're not having to cool it down with cold water. And that's a really efficient and effective way of using your combination boiler. Now that covers everything to do with setting the temperature of your hot water, but there's one last thing I need to tell you about to do with your hot water, and that is the preheat setting. 
Now you can see on the front of the boiler here, there's a button and it says preheat underneath it. And directly above it in the display, it says preheat on or preheat off. And if I push the button, the display would either change from saying preheat on to preheat off. Now the idea of preheat is as it says, it is to preheat the boiler so that when you turn the hot tap on, the boiler is already preheated. In other words, the boiler is already hot and it will not take so long for the hot water to come out of the tap because the boiler is already hot, preheated. But this does mean that the boiler is going to be keeping itself hot all through the day and through the night when you're not using the boiler, just waiting for you to turn the hot tap on. Now you can see in the display now, preheat as activated, pH standing for preheat. And the boiler has fired up because we can see the gas flame is in the display there and it's gradually warming itself up and then it's going to keep itself warm all the time at the temperature which it's going to reach in just a second which is 45 degrees and then you can see the screen has gone back to its standby screen so you can't actually see that the boiler is actually hot but you can see it says preheat on in the display so you know the boiler is going to be keeping itself hot all the time at that preheat setting of 45 degrees Obviously, this is using gas and adding extra wear to your boiler. So I always recommend having preheat turned off. Now, there are a couple occasions where you might like to have this setting turned on. And that's maybe if you're on a water meter, because you're going to use a little less water with the setting turned on. Because the hot water is going to come out of your tap maybe 15 to 30 seconds quicker than if you have the setting turned off. Also, you might want to have it turned on if your boiler's in an outhouse or a garage or in a loft, anywhere where it gets really cold. But just bear in mind, if it is in a really cold place, the boiler's going to be cooling down quicker, so the preheat is going to come on more often, using more gas. Obviously, you could experiment with this. You could try to turn it on, turn it off, and see which you prefer. One thing to note, if your central heating is on, then that is exactly the same as having preheat on because obviously the boiler is then already hot heating up your central heating. So if you're only likely to use your hot water when your central heating is turned on, then you should definitely have preheat turned off. And in the summer, it's a lot warmer, so it doesn't take as long for the hot water to come out of the tap. So that's just about it for the hot water. Now let's move on to your central heating control. So here's our central heating control and you can see there's a minimum and a maximum and then also there's an E standing for eco. The E is a guideline of where you want to set your central heating to keep your boiler running at its most efficient. Now when we turn the dial you can see that the display changes and there's a picture of a radiator flashing just there showing us that we are adjusting the temperature of our central heating. Now this temperature doesn't adjust how hot your house gets that's the job of your room thermostat but how hot your radiators get which in turn will affect how hot your house gets. Now we're going through a bit of an energy crisis right now. So if we can make our boilers more efficient, then that's going to be better for our gas bill. And you can see you could turn the temperature down to 60 degrees and that's going to make your boiler a little more efficient. Now you can experiment with this and try turning your temperature down even lower to maybe 56 degrees. And of course you can set it right down at 30 degrees, but your radius are literally just going to be lukewarm and your house will not get warm enough. Now we can set our central heating temperature up really high and highest it would go to is 80 degrees at maximum. And that's going to make your radius really, really hot and it's going to make your house heat up really quickly, but it is less efficient. So the recommended all year round temperature is somewhere between 60 and 65 degrees. But every house is different and you may find that your house, if you set it at 65 degrees in the midst of winter, your house just isn't warm enough. So for you, you may find you have to set that temperature just a little higher to maybe 70 degrees. But when spring comes and you still want a bit of heating, you can easily turn that temperature back down again. Again, you can experiment with this and just find the best setting for your house. I just wanted to point out to you that this boiler is now set at 60 degrees for your central heating and the central heating dial isn't pointing at the E, it's set just a little before that. And that should make the boiler run just a little bit more efficiently. Now this last dial on the end here where it says mode at the bottom, this allows you to turn things on and off. 
So at the moment you can see it's pointing at the radiator and the tap. So that means your hot water and your central heating are both turned on. If we turn the dial around to the tap, that means that we've only got the hot water on and you won't be able to turn your central heating on when it's in the tap position. And you can also turn the boiler off by turning the dial around to the off position. Just a quick note, even with the boiler turned off, the screen will still stay in its standby mode. If you wanted to turn your boiler completely off, you would need to switch it off from the main switch on the wall underneath your boiler. Just another quick note, most of the time you can just leave this dial in the hot water and central heating position, and then you can just turn your heating on and off by using your programmer or your room thermostat. And that's exactly the same as if you turn the dial to hot water only. Right, just before I show your boiler in operation, how to top it up and reset it, I want to quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video at all useful, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up or the subscribe. You can ring on the bell if you want to receive a notification and of course you can share the video with your friends. If you visit my website, I have categorized all my videos and products and parts that I recommend so you can easily find what you're looking for. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's bought me a cup of coffee and left me a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. So now let's show you your boiler in operation. So we can see I've turned the hot tap on and you can see the temperature on the display is starting to rise. You can also see there's a picture of a tap in the bottom of the display just there. And again, you can see the temperature rising and you can also see a flame in the display. That's indicating that the burner is lit and it's heating up your hot water. The temperature will continue to rise until it gets to the right temperature to keep your hot water hot and then it's stabilized there and when the tap is turned off, the display goes back to its normal standby screen, like that. When we turn our central heating on, the radiator symbol will appear in the bottom of the display. And then in this case, the temperature is starting to drop really rapidly because the last thing that was on was a hot water. So now the boiler is pumping our water around the central heating system. Now that hot water has been pumped out of the boiler, we should now see the temperature start to rise as the boiler starts heating up our central heating. And you can see the flame in the bottom of the display indicating that the boiler is lit and it is heating up our central heating. Now I'm just going to turn this central heating dial a little bit just to light up the display so we can see it a bit clearer. And you can see the temperature is continuing to rise. And if we also take a look at the pressure gauge, you'll see that the gauge has risen slightly when the central heating comes on. And that's perfectly normal. And then we should see the gauge rise a little bit more as the central heating gets hot. And when the heating goes off, we'll see that needle drop down again. Just a little note, if you turn your hot tap on now, you'll see the hot tap come up in the display and the boiler will start heating up your hot water and it will stop heating your central heating because the boiler can only heat one thing at a time. And the hot water always takes priority over the central heating. So if you have someone in your house who likes to take a really long shower, then all the time they're taking that shower, the central heating is going to be off. So that might mean you need to do a little careful planning if you've got a large family who take showers one after another, because all the time they're taking their showers, your heating is not going to be on. So now I just turn the heating off and you can see the radiator symbol went out and then the flame went out and then the screen went back to its normal standby screen. Now, if you ever get a fault code come up in your display like this L2, all we can do is press this reset button. It says reset there, if I press that button, that's gonna reset the boiler. And there we go, the boiler's now gone back to its standby screen and we should be able to operate the boiler again. Now the L2 fault was a gas fault, so the boiler was lit and in operation and then the flame went out. Now it is perfectly okay to press the reset button if you get a fault, but if you do have to keep pressing that reset button, then obviously there is a fault there and you're gonna to need to call a gas registered engineer to come and take a look at your boiler. And you might actually be damaging your boiler by continuously resetting it. There are links in the description to the UK gas register. Now, if you ever get the F1 fault come up in your boiler display, that is a low pressure fault. And we can see in the gauge here, the little black needle is pointing right down on zero bar. 
and you won't be able to use the boiler until the boiler is topped back up and the pressure is at between one and a one and a half bar. Now to top our boiler back up, we need to go underneath the boiler. Now there are lots of valves and pipes underneath the boiler, but we're looking for these two handles here, this blue one right here and this blue one right here. We also need to make sure that this bit of pipe is in place and that these two little nuts are done up you know, fairly tightly like that. And then we can open both the valves. So I'm going to open this valve here like that. When the valve is open, the valve is in line with the pipe like that. And when it's closed, it's up verticals like it's going across the pipe. OK, so now that one is open. I can now open this one here and that's going to let some water into the boiler and start topping it up. So I just open that valve like that. And I want to do this gently because I don't want to put too much pressure in. So when I'm doing this, I'm going to be keeping an eye on the pressure gauge because I don't want to put too much pressure in the boiler. You can see there the pressure has now risen up to one bar. And I'm going to keep my hand on that valve handle because I don't want to be fumbling around trying to find the valve handle and then end up putting too much pressure in it. So always just keep your hand on the handle ready to close it again. And there we are. I've closed that valve now. As you're topping a boiler up, you'll also hear a little bit of water noise as the water goes into the boiler. I'm just going to open it a little bit more and take the pressure up to 1.5 like that. Once the gauge reaches 1.5 bar, I'm then going to close the valve like that. And then I'm going to make sure that I close the other valve also. And there we go. Both valves are now shut. So here's a slightly different angle on those two valves and you can see they are both now closed. And there we go. The bullet is now all topped up again and it's up and running. So we can now use our hot water and central heating. One last thing, if your boiler has got a magna clean filter or any type of filter for that matter, and you'd like to know how to clean it out, then of course check in the links below because I've made lots of videos on how to clean these magnetic filters. So that's about it then. So if you want to watch one video on 10 ways to reduce your gas bill, you can click on the video just here. And of course you can click on subscribe. You can click on the bell, give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And it's always my toolbox friend. Bye for now and I'll see you next time.